Hi, I'm Joy Adler. I'm Hannah Sturgeon. And I'm Danielle Abiel. We did an experiment on alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone induced anorexia in Japanese quail, likely involves the ventromedial hypothalamus and paraventricular nucleus of the hypothalamus. The goal of this experiment was to determine the effects of alpha MSH on Japanese quail food consumption and water intake, as well as CFOS immune reactivity and appetite related factor mRNA. Japanese quail is selected because it has not undergone artificial selection for growth-related traits like chickens have. We want to see how if this artificial selection has an effect on the results. Japanese quail is a cage-adapted bird, however, it is still a good representation of a wild-type bird. The effects of alpha MSH have been studied in chickens, however chickens are highly artificially selected and bred for production purposes. Part of this experiment is to determine whether these generations of artificial selections affect how they, res how they respond to injected substances. Um, background, alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone, or alpha MSH, reduces food intake in birds and mammals. The melanocyte system plays an important role in regulation of energy balance. POMC is a neuropeptide member of this system, as well as AGRP and MCRS. Central administration of M alpha MSH inhibits feeding and increases CFOS immune reactivity in the paraventricular nucleus, or the PVN, of the hypothalamus in rodents and chickens within one hour of injection. <laughs> Alpha MSH is a hormone that is thought to reduce appetite and increase energy expenditure, and CFOS is a transcription factor that aids in formation of new neuronal information. Here you can see a cartoon drawing, a cartoon-like drawing of the hypothalamic neuronal circuits regulating energy homeostasis and glucose metabolism. A neuron containing POMC is activated in the arcuate nucleus, which in turn communicates with the neuron in the paraventricular nucleus, causing the release of alpha MSH. So moving on with our experimentation, the first experiment we conducted measured food and water intake. So the quail received an injection of alpha MSH at 0 0.5, 0 0.55 or 50 picomoles. Later they were returned to the cage with full access to food and water, and then they were measured at 30 minute intervals for 180 minutes. Based on the results of experiment 1, seeing that there was no significant difference in the effects of alpha MSH in the 0, 0.5 and 5 picomole doses, we proceeded with just two doses using only 0 and 50 picomoles in the second experiment. We allowed the chicks to have unlimited access to food before injecting them with the fluid, just as in experiment 1, but this time we withheld their access to food post-injection. The food restriction was so that we could prevent any confounding variables related to CFOS immunoreactivity due to food and eating. At 60 minutes post-injection, we expected the strongest expression of CFOS, so we anesthetized the quail and removed the brain. We put them in a solution for another 60 minutes and then took slices of the brain that show areas related to the feeling of hunger and satiety. So, in experiment 3, the procedures for experiment for the third experiment are very similar to the second one. Just as with, the exp with experiment 2, we administered doses of alpha MSH at 0 and 50 picomoles, allowed free access to food pre-injection, and withheld food after the injection. At 60 minutes, we anesthetized the chicks, removed their brains, and took brain slices. However, this time we purified the RNA strands and tested it to assure its purity. This way, we were able to distinguish RNA from other molecules and strands in the reaction as an effect of injecting alpha MSH. So in experiment one, at 30 minutes post-injection, food intake was lowest in quail that were injected with 50 picomoles of alpha MSH. And the magnitude of difference in food intake between the 50 picomoles and vehicle group was greatest at 30 minutes and least at 180. By 60 minutes, only the 50 picomole group was different from the vehicle injected group. And at, 100, at 90 minutes post-injection, the quail injected with 50 picomoles of alpha MSH ate more than the quail injected with the vehicle. Water consumption at 60 and 90 minutes post-injection, the quail that was administered 50 picomoles of alpha MSH had drank less than the vehicle injected quail, and at 120 minutes, the inverse was seen. We saw that both species experienced reduced food intake as the intake of food continued to get smaller as the doses of alpha MSH increased. Much higher levels of effects from the alpha MSH were found in the quail experiment than with the chicken. But the effects of quail versus chickens differed 
in that the difference between the 40 and the picamoles in the vehicle group for chickens was one third, and the difference between the 50 picamoles in the vehicle group was one tenth in quail. A difference in results between high and low weight cheeks was suspected, which is why the different weight classes were separate during experimentation. The effects on low and weight chickens and high weight chickens differed as well as we expected. All injection amounts caused reduced food intake in low weight chickens, and only the highest dose caused reduced food intake in high weight chickens. The dosage levels that caused reduced food intake in low weight chickens were 24, 120, and 600 picamoles of alpha MSH. The reduced food intake period began to dissipate at approximately 30 minutes, and a period of compensatory food intake began. The quail with the greatest recovery period were the quail with that were administered the highest dose. Compensatory food intake is a period with high level food intake after the period of reduced food intake that was caused by alpha MSH. The purpose of this period is to make up for the food loss during the period of no eating. Cumulatively, however, the alpha MSH birds had still consumed less than the vehicle injected birds at 180 minutes after the injection. CFOS was measured in the hypothalamus in the greatest numbers of reactive cells are in the two nuclei, the PVN and the VMH. The PVN is the paraventricular nucleus, and the PMH is the ventromedial hypothalamus. Activation of the PVN in response to central injection of alpha MSH appears to be the same between the quail and the broiler chicks. Because of this, the reduced eating is caused by alpha MSH are mediated via the PVN. The chicken study did not evaluate mRNA in the VMH because it did not explain increased CFOS immune reactivity. So it is possible that the present study could increase the MC4R expression in the VMH region. In the whole hypothalamus of quail, there is decreased AGRP and DDC expression, which is a neuropeptide AGRP, and DDC is a dopa decarboxylase compared to expression compared to the vehicle injected quail, and greater MC. For R mRNA, RMRNA and alpha MSH than vehicle injected quail. MC4 is a melanocortin receptor. In mammals, hypothalamic nuclei have large quantities of MC4R also containing dopaminergic nerve terminals in the microinjection of alpha MSH to increase feeding and increase dopamine release. This research suggests that the anorexic effects of M alpha MSH are in part mediated through increased dopaminergic signaling. <laughs> So these are, this is our opinion on how this experiment could have been done better, or how it could be improved. The discussion seemed not so much like examining the results and implications of the experiment being written about, but rather a long list of the findings of other experiments in a comparison to them. And we believe that there could have been more experimental doses. The range in experimental doses were spread very far apart at 0 and 50 picomoles between only two doses, and only one solution actually contained an active dosage of alpha MSH and that was consistently administered throughout the, exper throughout the experiment. One cannot determine the threshold and effectiveness with only one active dose, so a solution concentration in the areas of 15, 30, and 45 picomoles should be administered. Now that we know alpha MSH has anorectic effects in multiple types of birds, not just chicks, we can run the experiment on other higher up species, such as apes, to see if alpha MSH has the same effects on higher level species, and eventually incorporate these findings into pharmaceuticals to help with appetite control, to assist with fighting obesity. Experimentation on dopaminergic neurons is also a good further experiment. Earlier in this week, I um, mentioned that dopaminergic signaling plays a role in mediating anorectic effects of alpha MSH. It's known that amphetamines, such as Adderall, used for, drug, used for focus, has a side effect of suppressing appetite. It's also known that Adderall causes highness by blocking the reuptake mechanism of dopamine causing an excess to be present in extracellular fluid. It would be interesting to conduct an experiment using amphetamines such as Adderall to observe how LC's dopaminergic neurons are affected and involved in the appetite and if there's a way to isolate this effect in appetite suppression. This research is important because uh, obesity is three times what it was just one generation ago. It comes with many health issues such as diabetes, heart disease, high blood pressure, and much more. And creating a drug that can combat such a large problem in the U.S. would have a major impact on our population. Obesity is becoming overwhelm an overwhelming issue in the United States, affecting nearly 1 in 5 children and more than 35% of adults. Here are some of our sources. From the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, and also from the article we did a report on. Please read here. Thank you.